everybody and welcome back. Hope you're having a wonderful start to your week. We have a lot to talk about in today's video, including this powerful storm that is likely going to work its way through the country here going into the middle of this week, bringing winter weather and severe weather. So we're definitely going to touch on that. But another thing that we're going to go super in depth on in today's video is the longer range pattern. And it looks like we are getting into a pattern here that is more conducive for winter weather uh, here across the lower 48. And even for some people that may not have seen all that much winter weather so far this year. So make sure you stay tuned for that because we're going to go super in depth with that and look at the chances of these rounds of storms working their way through the country and see if they will produce snow for some of us. Uh, and I definitely think they will. But if you're new here, I would love for you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're building quite the community here. Uh, and we've seen some incredible growth. And really, we just have some incredible people a part of this channel who are always engaging in the videos. Uh, and we're really building a family-like atmosphere here. So if that's something you want to be a part of, make sure you subscribe uh, and like the video to let me know that you enjoy it. And go ahead and comment too. Tell me where you're watching from, why you're watching, and what you want to see here in the next couple of weeks. With all that said, though, let's go ahead and get into the weather because uh, I think that's enough of me rambling on. So currently here looking at radar, we do have some rain working its way here through the Ohio and uh, Tennessee River Valley as well as the Midwest. What this is going to do uh, is going to begin to push east as we get into the next 24, 48 hours, uh, bringing some of those showers throughout the Mid-Atlantic, Northeast, and even Southeastern part of the country over the next couple of days. What that is also going to do, though, is set up shop for that next system, that more powerful system that is going to move through towards the middle and end of the week. But looking at satellite here, uh, a lot of the same stories uh, that radar showed, including these showers here working their way through that, you know, east central part of the country, uh, as well as this other low pressure up here into uh, New England, helping to produce some snow, ice, and uh, sleet here into sections of Maine, but that should begin to pull out over the next 24 hours or so. So looking at our current hazards, we do still have those winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings here into the northeast for that system I just talked about, but that should finally begin to work its way out here over the next 12 to 24 hours. Another thing to note here on this map are these winter storm watches here into sections of the plains, uh, and those were issued because of that next system that is on its way, which is going to cause some uh, pretty intense snowfall here, I think through a pretty good swath here of the Midwest and Plains. Uh, and we'll talk more about that. And that storm will also impact the Northeast with winter weather, including I think maybe some major cities in the Northeast uh, as we get later into the week. All right, so looking at tonight's low temperatures, uh, a lot warmer than it was last night for us here in the East, especially the Southeast. We were uh, into the 20s and 30s for a lot of us here in kind of the uh, Southern part of the Mid-Atlantic here. Uh, but that will change going into tonight with temperatures well above freezing. Uh, and if you want to find temperatures below freezing, it's mainly going to be confined here to the northeast tonight uh, and as well as the northern plains and out west. But go ahead and find where you live on this map uh, and that will be your low temperature for tonight. All right, looking at tomorrow's high temperatures, uh, quite a warm day for January. Let me tell you, uh, these temperatures here into the south, very impressive to see in January. 60s in Atlanta, 70s in Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Texas, Florida. Uh, very warm air for this time of year. So once again, just uh, you know, find where you live and you can find your high temperature for tomorrow. And then going into Wednesday, a much of the same in terms of high temperatures. Uh, and Wednesday will kind of be that last day for us here in the east before the impacts begin with that powerful system uh, later on in the week. So, uh, of course, you know, like I said, find where you live and you can see your high temperature there for Wednesday. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this more powerful system that is going to work its way here through the country. Sorry, I took a sip of my drink. <laughs> uh, anyway, though, so this is that current system we're dealing with here. This is causing some of that light rain for us here in the east. Uh, as we get into tomorrow afternoon, uh, you see some of those showers more confined here to the southeast and mid-Atlantic. Uh, and overall, not a very impactful system here, but definitely expect some cloudy, kind of rainy weather for a lot of us, uh, although warm, as we talked about uh, here in the southeast with this tomorrow. Then as we get into Wednesday afternoon, uh, we should begin to clear out mostly in the east from that first system, 
but that will set the stage for this next powerful system to get going, going into the middle part of this coming week. All right, so looking at the system here, again, this is Wednesday afternoon. Uh, you see why we have those winter storm watches issued here for sections of the plains. Heavy snow at times there. And then while that is ongoing on Wednesday, we will have that severe weather threat further to, to the south, excuse me, uh, through sections of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Arkansas. And we will touch on that here in a minute. But as we get into uh, overnight Wednesday, you see that band of snow then works through the Midwest. Uh, and we're left with really just some showers. Shouldn't be dealing with too much severe weather. Uh, after Wednesday with this system, but showers and maybe even some lightning and storms moving through the southeast and mid-Atlantic, going through Thursday night here and into the northeast. Once we get into Thursday afternoon here, uh, you see that, uh, sorry, I did not mean to loop that, uh, but yeah, once we get into Thursday evening here, sorry, or yeah, <laughs> uh, you see some of that snow here working its way into the northeast uh, and then that rain further to the south. Uh, but I think some areas of the northeast here uh, that haven't really seen too much snow this year could get some out of this. I think a place like Boston, uh, it's going to be a very close call, but I think Boston's going to be right on this line between rain and snow from this system. Uh, so we'll look at those snow totals here in a minute, but a very tough forecast there for Boston. Uh, and then as we get into Friday, mainly the northeast being left uh, with the remnants of the system, including some snow here again. I think places like Boston, maybe even down through Connecticut and Rhode Island, seeing some snow out of this on the back end as we get into Friday before getting to the weekend and it finally begins to clear out. So we'll show you the same storm here with our Euro model now. Uh, again, some light rain here the first couple days of the week with this first system, but as we get into the second system here, uh, this is going into Wednesday afternoon here on the Euro. Once again, this heavy band of snow here to the north of this low into the plains, and then that severe weather threat to the south. You can see this long or the strong line of storms here working their way through sections of uh, Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, and Mississippi. Uh, and then as we get into uh, sections, or excuse me, into parts of Wednesday night, you see that band of snow moves up through the Midwest and we're left with just showers and storms here through the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic. And then as we get into your afternoon on Thursday, uh, we'll see some of that wintry precipitation move its way into sections of New England with rain to the south of that. Uh, I think um, New York City, Philadelphia, likely more of a rain event here for you guys. Uh, Boston, again, you're gonna be right on that line of rain and snow. Uh, and then this impactful system will continue as we go into the overnight Thursday. Uh, and then as we get into Friday, again, you see this low pressure really cranking up here on the coast. So a place like Boston, it's really going to be a tough forecast there. But I think, you know, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine will solidly be in the snow with this system. Uh, and we could get some pretty good accumulations there, especially into the high country. Uh, and then some leftover snow showers Friday afternoon before clearing up going into next weekend. Uh, now, after that storm here, uh, you can see, I'll just kind of quickly touch on this before we talk more about the long range later on. Uh, you see, we continue to get kind of more rounds of these storms to work their way up through the East Coast here. Uh, and I think some of these will likely produce uh, some pretty good winter storm conditions for some of us, but we'll touch more on that in the uh, second half of the video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Uh, looking at the severe weather threat, though, here with this system, uh, again, here into sections of East Texas all the way up through Memphis, Tennessee, uh, likely going to deal with that line of severe storms um, with this system on Wednesday. And um, let's go and look at some of those ingredients as well. So this is for Wednesday. You'll see on radar here, uh, pretty clear until we get to Wednesday afternoon, we kind of get this line of storms to form here, uh, and that will then push east bringing some of that severe weather to this general area uh, that we just looked at that risk. Okay, so looking at our instability here, uh, again, nothing off the charts obviously here, but enough that uh, they do have that risk issued uh, for some of these storms. You know, getting past 500 uh, here on our chart, which as you can see on the bottom, it's not very high, but uh, it is definitely enough to work with whenever you have the amount of wind shear that we are dealing with with this system. Uh, so you can see Wednesday afternoon here, uh, bulk wind shear in some places getting up towards 80 knots. So 
you know, a lot of wind shear to worry about with this. So even if we don't have a lot of that instability, um, there's enough wind shear that we still have to worry about some of those storms to produce some damaging winds and maybe even a couple isolated tornadoes. Okay, so looking at the snow now with this system, um, northern plains here, again, we're going to get a pretty nice swath of snow out of this, uh, especially here through Nebraska. I think 6 to 12 inches of snow is a pretty safe bet. And then that band of snow will likely move through sections here of Iowa and into Wisconsin, even a place like Minneapolis getting snow out of this storm. Uh, but I think, you know, Nebraska is going to have the bullseye here of that heavier snow, uh, you know, potentially passing a foot in certain locations there. Looking at the Midwest here, uh, you can also see we get some of that snow through here, a bit of a uh, I guess a better image to see here than the other one for the Midwest. Uh, sections, I think northern Iowa is going to get some pretty good snow out of this. Uh, southeastern Iowa, maybe not so much, but even up towards, you know, Green Bay, Wisconsin, maybe half a foot of snow out of this, and then into uh, the UP of Michigan as well, getting that snowfall, uh, and then that will stretch even into the northern half of Michigan. So looking at the northeast here, I think it's a bit more of a complicated forecast with this storm. Uh, I definitely think we get pretty good snow totals here into upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. As for a place like Boston, again, that rain-snow line is going to really be right there near the city. So if I'm living in the northern suburbs of Boston, um, right now, again, we're still, you know, a bit less than a week out now, but about five days out, I'm thinking more of, you know, one to three, maybe even three to five inches of snow. South side of Boston, um, it's going to be iffy. I think you'll definitely get some of that back in snow, uh, but we'll just have to wait till we get a bit closer here uh, for sections like Boston to really nail down those totals. But nonetheless, I do think snow will fall here into sections of southeastern New England with this system. All right, so talking about the long range now, uh, and I've saved a pretty big chunk of this video to talk about the long range because uh, it has become more and more intriguing uh, in terms of what we will see here. So we're going to look at a couple different graphs here for the long range and see uh, what exactly we can expect as we get past the 10-day period. So uh, you see this big block of blue here moving through uh, the central part of the country. That is this storm's, uh, this week's storm, excuse me. Uh, and then you see that finally moves out as we get into this weekend. Uh, and we get a couple more of those little blue sections to kind of break off and move here through the eastern half of the country. But once we get past uh, really about day 10 here, you see this big block of blue here covering a lot of the lower 48. Uh, and that is helping to feed some of this cold Canadian air down into the lower 48. And then you also have kind of this southeast ridge here in the southeastern part of the United States. So what I think we'll get here is a bit of a battle between the two, and what we'll likely see is a lot of storms kind of riding that zone between the two boundaries. Uh, and with this cold air in place, we're likely going to get a pretty good swath of snow, I think, um, here somewhere in the eastern United States. Now, if this blue blob shifts further to the south and the southeast ridge kind of backs off, then you know that block of snow could be further to the east. Same thing vice versa. If the, you know, Southeast Ridge kind of goes north here, then that block of snow could be further up north. But wherever this kind of low pressure track sets up here, I think we'll likely get a couple rounds of these storms to produce uh, snowfall for a lot of people, including maybe even some severe weather where some of this uh, moisture can return with that Southeast Ridge. So that's the GFS here. And then as we go later into the month, you see that battle continue between these two zones. Um, really into the end of January. So uh, again, I think wherever this battle line kind of sets up, we're going to get continual rounds of storms to produce uh, some winter storms likely. So another way to show this is the chance here with our ensembles of just seeing snow accumulate up to at least an inch. So uh, you see this week's storm kind of move here through the Midwest, um, indicating those higher chances of seeing that snow accumulate. Uh, and then once we get past that, we likely get another storm to move through. A lot of those same areas here after that. Uh, and you can see here with uh, these kind of colors increasing here. And then after that moves out, um, you see once we get more into the long range, again, where that battle zone kind of sets up here, if we get a low track like this, that chance of snow will increase for a lot of us here in the east. So it's going to be very crucial where kind of the southeast ridge and this cooler Canadian air clash 
and where we get that storm track to set up. But the GFS ensembles here would show a track generally somewhere here like this. So areas to the north would see that snow, areas to the south would see that rain. And then as we go further out, you see kind of rounds of that continue to work their way through. So that's the GFS ensembles. Let's look at the Euro ensembles now. Again, this is that one storm working through this week. Uh, but once we get past that into kind of the 10 day period here on the Euro, you see a lot of the same thing uh, where you get kind of this battle zone between the blue and the red setting up shop. And with that, you'll get that storm track kind of between the two producing snow to the north and rain to the south. So on the Euro here, that southeast ridge is a little bit weaker and we get a little bit of a further south storm track, which could help to bring uh, snow to areas further east and south into the long range. So we'll look at the same map here with the Euro ensembles that we looked at with the GFS ensembles. Uh, again, that's that first system moving through. Then we likely get another system after that here into the northeast, which we will talk about uh, later on down the line. Uh, and then after that, you see, uh, again, these colors kind of setting up uh, a storm track kind of like this, which would help to bring some of that snow to the northern side. So uh, this is something I think we're gaining confidence in and uh, we will likely see unfold here once we get towards the end or, or the kind of latter part of January here. Uh, I think we're going to get rounds of these snowstorms to work their way through uh, some places here in the east and likely getting snowstorm after snowstorm for a lot of the same places. Uh, and you can see that as we go even longer range, you get kind of those colors to continue to go over some of the same areas over and over. So... Uh, another thing with this is just temperatures in general. So let's go ahead and take a look at our temperature anomalies here with both of our models. So once we get here into uh, kind of the 7 to 10 day period, you see we're still kind of dominated by these warmer temperatures here in the east. Uh, and that will likely stay the way or stay the same way through about day 7 to 10. But once we get past day 10, you can see kind of what the model showed with that big blob of blue here and then the red blob. Uh, you can see where we have the red to the southeast and then the blue overtaking a lot of the lower 48. Uh, so cooler temperatures, colder temperatures, more January-like temperatures definitely on the horizon here. Uh, you can see here with the GFS ensembles, pretty much the entire lower 48 is below average. Uh, and maybe even long-range signs of the return of the polar vortex here. So uh, if we get that to line up here with some storm tracks, uh, definitely could set up some pretty impressive snowstorms long range and you can see uh, that kind of that pattern locks itself into place long term looking at the same map with our euro ensembles here again that red dominates here for about the next seven to ten days but once we get past that that blue overtakes and even some of those darker blues here up into the northern plains indicating maybe the return of the polar vortex. So I think once we get here further into January, we've got quite the pattern setting up. And I think someone here in the um, eastern United States here is really going to get clobbered a couple times with some storms. Now, again, this, this area could shift further to the south and east. It could shift further to the north and west. Uh, and that's where we're going to have to fine tune as we get into that long term pattern. But nonetheless, I think we're going to get a pretty big return of winter here to the United States uh, and feel a lot more like January, especially once we get to the end. But if you made it to the end of the video, let me know in the comments um, that you watched the whole thing and, uh, you know, just, I guess, <laughs> give some feedback if you'd like. But uh, once again, tell me where you're watching from. I love communicating with you guys in the comments section and interacting. Uh, and I love continuing to build this community. But uh, with that said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you all tomorrow.